You can still carry on uh, eating and drinking, that's fine by me. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Right. Consumerism. Consumerism. Um, we, uh, my, Margaret and I were trying to buy um, a, a Blu-ray for my, our son-in-law's um, birthday, who lives in America. And um, so we went on to uh, eBay and looking at all the different sites, and there were countless different sites where all you could buy um, a Blu-ray for this, this particular film. Uh, our small group this afternoon were having a, a discussion about um, how, we, um, how we can better care for the planet. And one of the conclusions that we came to was that the, um, the biggest enemy of the planet in terms of its future, its, its care, um, its sustainability, is this word consumerism. We want what we want, we want what we like, and we like to have as much choice as we possibly can, don't we? We are faced with a um, choice everywhere, a myriad of choices. You can, a visit to the, um, to the greengrocers um, can go something like this. I'd like to buy some carrots, please. Certainly. Would you like loose or they're in bags? 250 um. grams, 500 grams, one kilogram, or you can have a sack if you've got a horse. Um, well, I haven't got a horse, and my shopping list says a pound of carrots, and if I don't go home with a pound of carrots, I'll be in trouble. So. Well, that's 500 grams. Okay, 500 so grams. 500 gram bag of carrots, or you can have loose carrots. Well, I just, I just want carrots. I suppose, okay, well, let's do without the bag because that's just something extra, isn't it? I don't want the bag. I will just have loose carrots. Right. You can have ordinary carrots. <laughs> there's bunched carrots. Or there's baby carrots. I just want carrots. <laughs> right. <laughs> Would you like organic? <laughs> well, what's the alternative? The alternative is ones that have been smothered in chemicals and pesticides, I'll have the organic ones, please. Right. Um, what colour would you like? Colour? <laughs> My carrots are orange, aren't they? They've always been orange. No, 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 you can get mauve carrots, orange carrots, right. or you can get a golden yellow carrot. Yellow carrots, mauve, oh. <laughs> I give up, I just want carrots. <laughs> Choice in every area of life. But not really in traditional church. We are expected, aren't we, to conform when we go into church. We are expected, um, when there's a hymn, we're expected to stand. When the, uh, in many churches, when the, uh, the offering's brought forward, we're expected to stand. And sometimes even um, there's restrictions on where we can sit. Oh, don't sit at the front because the children sit at the front. Um, this part of the church is, if you've got a hearing aid, it's better for, it's better for you to sit that part of the church. And um, sometimes, um, and uh, I, I would never forget the conversation that um, I had with somebody, um, this is not in this circuit, in a previous circuit, um, uh, somebody who um, had not set foot in the church uh, for, for 10 years or so, um, and he, he explained the reason why uh, he'd gone into a church um, and he'd sat in the seat and somebody had come up and tapped him on the shoulder and saying and said, I'm sorry, that's my seat. That's serious. That is serious. How does our church culture feel to someone who's at home in this kind of consumerist, choice-driven culture? It's a challenge, isn't it? It's a challenge. Now, of course, we're not saying that we just have to accept the consumerist approach to everything. As I've just said, consumerism is probably the biggest threat 
to the future of our planet? Is culture, the culture of consumerism, is it friend or foe? Wealth. Like most things, I guess, it's both, isn't it? It's a question of balance. We have to critique the culture of consumerism and challenge it and know also when to embrace it. Just think of Jesus. All the ways in which he embraced his culture as a traditional Jew. He went to the synagogue. He went to the temple. But he challenged the culture where he felt it was not good. Didn't he? He challenged the rules and regulations of his predominant culture of the time. And people challenge um, culture uh, at the consumerist cu culture today. Oops, wrong way. Uh, this is a song uh, that's been uh, written, I shan't try and sing it, and we couldn't uh, get the music, so which, is, which some of you will probably be pleased about. But um, the song um, written by Jesse J called Price Tag, it's not about the money, money, money. We don't need your money money, money. We just want to make the world dance. Forget about the price tag. Why is everyone so obsessed? Money can't buy us happiness. Can we all slow down and enjoy right now? Guarantee we'll be feeling alright. And we saw, didn't we, um, two or three years ago, there was a kind of mass movement that challenged our consumerist society. We saw it outside St Paul's. We saw it in our own city centre here in Nottingham. It was really good to go and talk with the people who were involved in the Occupy movement in the city centre. And uh, some of us went and, and supported them and encouraged them because they were there to challenge our consumerist culture. But still, if we're honest, despite that, and sadly, um, it seems that, um, that the momentum that um, was created at that time seems to have dissipated. And consumerism is still very much our dominant culture in society. We want what we want. We want what we like. We want it now. Satisfy me. Satisfy me. And it's like that in church as well, isn't it? Satisfy me. We want what we want. We like what we like. And if it doesn't satisfy me, the worship did nothing for me this morning, then it's no good. Interesting quote from um, an American pastor, which I'm sure is true here too. Worship is a form of entertainment. If people are not entertained, they don't feel they are participating. People don't like it, then they blame the church. Because isn't worship about satisfying me and satisfying you and satisfying them? Well, of course it isn't, is it? It isn't about worth it. That's not what worship is about at all. Worship is about giving to God. But if we're not careful, faith and the whole way we approach faith can become very me-centred, can't it? Very much about what I want. And that can be, I might want what we were doing 50 years ago. Just as much as I might want something that's really uh, lively and modern. We can even, and I think we, um, in, in our uh, church culture, we very much emphasise our individual personal relationship with God. And that can become that can kind of feed into this me. It's all about me and what I want and, and what works for me. 
if you look at the uh, if you look at the early church, it wasn't so much about me. It was about the community. When we say the creed, we say we believe, don't we? We don't say I believe. We say we believe. If you look at the Old Testament, and the, the in the Old Testament, it's very much about um, society together and faith as something shared. And I think we've lost something of that in our kind of me culture. Our, we need to go back to being God-centered rather than me-centered. So is there any good news in all this? Well, yes, there is. There are all kinds of opportunities um, and one um, example, and I'll, I, I hope Tim wasn't going to use this uh, in one of the, in something he's going to say, but I'll, uh, I haven't checked it with him. But um, one of the things that um, his group's been involved with is getting invited to go to psychic fairs. Yeah, yeah. Psychic fairs are, that's very much a kind of um, uh, a manifestation of modern consumerist culture and spirituality can embrace anything and everything. Well, there's an opportunity there for Christians to engage with it and to actually present um, our uh, view of um, spirituality and faith in a, in a very different and what can seem quite a challenging and threatening environment. Um, uh, there's a, a group of um, people in um, Wakefield who, um, based on a, a TV series, which I haven't seen, but some of you may have done, The House of Tiny Tearaways, um, which is all about um, encouraging people to uh, learn good parenting skills. So a, a mums and tots group in, in Wakefield took this opportunity and set out this vision of running a parenting course which would lead on to the kind of questions that children ask, which leads on to the kind of questions that adults ask, and uh, which leads on to the whole question of what kind of spiritual resources can help us at home. And then there's the possibility of, a, of introducing Christianity uh, through an Emmaus course or something similar, leading eventually to a small worshipping congregation, all driven um, by the fact that people um, want the best, uh, to be the best parents they can and to give the best opportunities to their children, leading to the basis of a new church. So there are opportunities, there is um, good news. We're going to... Um, hear the story now um, of, um, so we need the, um, the, the Fresh Expressions DVD, uh, please Roger, of a church. Um